Welcome back to First Year in Medical Device Sales. I am your host, Jacob McLaughlin, coming to you today on a beautiful, sunshiny day in Scottsdale. But I wanted to make today's episode because last week you all saw I had the opportunity to go to IMSH uh, for the conference we were working. And I got to reconnect with one of the reps that is on my team. His name's Jake. Awesome dude. He runs our international sales. And he actually was a former personal trainer just like myself. And so we were talking about how it carried over from being a personal trainer to being in sales and being in medical device sales and having a lot of success. And the conversation we were talking about is how big it is to be able to build a relationship. The reason I'm bringing this up today is because I hear so many times by people that have been in the industry for a while that relationship selling is dead. And I really disagree with that when you're focused on how to actually get deals done and create relationships in the long term. For the fact of, I understand why they say that when they're talking about the product, it has to be clinically better. You have to be able to have the research. You need to be able to show it and pricing, all that good stuff. I totally understand that part. The one thing I hear all the time is, oh, your relationships, you can't go just talk to somebody and be able to go make sales. And the reality of it is, is if you have a great product, because you should only be selling products that you actually believe in and you know how to build relationships and you know how to foster those relationships and you are just good at what you do. And what I mean when I say good at what you do, you say you're going to be somewhere, you do it. You say you're going to drop something off, you drop it off. If you say you're going to be at a surgery, you show up to the surgery. If you say you're going to get some supplies for somebody, you get some supplies for people. When things don't go great and there's back orders or whatever, you communicate that. It's not them just finding out randomly. It's just being able to do the job that we're supposed to do. But so many times I see reps who don't follow up. They say they're going to be at a surgery and they just don't show up. They have the customer reach out to them and they're all mad about the back orders instead of actually being proactive and letting them know about it before and being like, hey, I'm going to help anyway. I have some trunk stock if I can help out, right? Doing certain things like that. And the reason I'm saying that is if you can just do what you say you're going to do, you know how to build the relationships. You also have a great product, but you're also an expert in that product. This is where building the relationships goes a long way to have success in med device sales. And so what we talked about was... When we're personal trainers, the one thing you cannot go do is walk up to a random person and be like, hey, Jim, you look like you could lose five pounds because guess what? They ain't ever going to work with you. You just insulted them. But what we talked about was, for example, when I was a personal trainer, one way I got clients was, again, it was just building relationships. I would go up to them and if I saw them working on the treadmill, like I would see them there multiple times. And then I would just go up and like give them a fist bump and I'd be like, hey, man, my name is Jacob. I'm a trainer here. I just wanted to say I absolutely see you crushing it in here when you're doing your workouts. I just want to say, great job. And then they're like, oh, thanks, man. I'll be like, what's your name? And they'll just tell me and I'll be like, that's awesome. We'll keep up the great work. And I walked away. I would see, let's just say Jerry the next week or the next day. And I'd be like, Jerry, what's up? We fist bump. And then we would create that relationship over time. And I'd get to know Jerry. I'd go spend a little more time every single time. Hey man, how was the workout? Hey, what's going on? What do you do for work? All this stuff and actually build that relationship. And then eventually I'd be like, Hey, what are some of the biggest struggles you're facing? They would be telling me. And then there'd be, I'd be like, Hey, if you ever need some more help, more than happy to help here's some. And then what I usually would do is actually just give them some free advice and be like, Hey, you should go try this or Hey, on your macros, just give this a little change. They would do that. And they would be like, see me next week. And they'd be like, Jacob, it worked. Oh my gosh. And then what you did was you bought their trust. You gained their trust because again, you weren't trying to sell them anything. You were just creating a relationship and actually just trying to help somebody. And then what usually happened is then you would have that conversation and then it'd be like, it turned into something more where they're like, Hey, I'm still trying to lose an extra 10, 20, 30 pounds. And Hey, do do you do this? And be like, yeah. And they see you actually doing your job. And you can just be able to give them helpful hints, but you're never slamming down their throat. I'm a trainer. I'm a trainer. I'm a trainer because they understand that you're a trainer. They see you at the gym. They see you training people, which is only going to give you more strength in the whole argument when you're having that conversation. But we talked about that exact situation and then how you're able to do it with surgeons, with doctors, with people, because what every rep that I see that struggles is they're just trying to slam their product in people's throats. They're like, take my stuff. And it works. It's better. It's better. Nobody cares if it's better. Why would they trust you? Why would they actually take your advice? And that's the thing that I continue to see is if we can just earn the trust of people, build relationships. Like for example, I say this all the time. You go into an OR room with the doctors you're currently in, but in the place that you're currently in. Do you know the scrub techs or the nurse's name? 
Do you know anything about them? Do you know if they have a dog? Do they have a family? How long have they been doing their profession? Where are they from? It is the simplest things that you will be able to learn about somebody that then you can connect and find the common ground and then be able to start having the conversations. But again, why most people can't do this is they think about making the sale today or yesterday or even just tomorrow instead of like, let's play this out for three, six months. Let's see if I can just earn their trust. And again, here's the whole conversation is my whole talk was to always be an asset. Whether the sale came or did not come, it did not matter for the fact of I'm just here to be an asset. If it's the best option for the person on the table, that's what I'm going to do. Right. But so many people will be like, oh, it's got to be now. It's got to be focused on this. But like I bring it back to personal training. Every single person on a first time I'm training them, it was always just like, Hey, Jenny, tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, where are you originally from? And they're going to tell you. I'm like, oh, no way. How'd you get out here? And then they're going to tell you. And then they'll be like, oh, you're married. Oh, no, I am or I'm not, whatever it is. And they're going to tell you. And then you're going to ask, oh, do you have any kids? Oh, you do. Tell me about them, right? You just get to know them. Again, it's never saying, I do this, I do this, I do this. You're only asking about the prospect the whole time, building that trust, building the relationship, putting them through a hard workout, giving them knowledge that they can actually use, even if they left you and never came back, but you're going to have the conversation with them. From there, you continue to build on the relationship, but it's why, so for example, personal trainers, we talk about this. If you do like cut, if they cut hair or they're like massage therapists or whatever it is, a lot of times what happens is you almost become quote unquote the therapist, but it's a weird position to be in where people will tell you and actually share with you the whole life but you'll never meet half those people. And it's a very interesting place to be. But the reason I'm saying that is is when you get that buy-in, that's what they're looking for. And then you get the results. Now they're even more bought in. This is what we had the conversation about was being a personal trainer, why it helped us become a great medical device sales rep was because again, it was more focused on the building the relationships, learning how to do that. You're still cold calling in personal training. You're still building the relationships. You're doing a free trial, right? You're doing the first session. You still have to follow up with them. We still had to do all the things. It's just the carryover of the skills. And so what I can just sit here and tell you guys is if you are a rep, a brand new rep, an associate sales rep, whoever it is, even if you've been in for five years, like, can you take off the selling hat for a second? Focus on the person that you're working with, get to know them, and then... From there, be able to show how you're an expert because what's going to happen is they're eventually they're going to ask something. And then if you can show that you're an expert, then it goes forward. Because I can sit here and tell you some of the top doctors that I've worked with, it was always the buy-in as I was there. I was always helpful to the staff. And then eventually we would be doing the surgery and then they would ask me about a question. I would have the answer for them. If I didn't, I would tell them I would figure it out. And I would always come back within 24 hours with the answer because I would go do my research or I'd call somebody. I would give them the help that they needed. I would show that I'm an expert in what we did. The cases would go good. And then once I did that, after one or two times, I got their trust immediately. They literally would be like, oh my gosh, this, you know what you're doing. And then we guess what they would start doing? Asking me questions. Then they would ask to get to know me a little bit better. And I can sit here and tell you how I was able to flip a territory when I was at Medtronic to the lowest performing to top 10 was literally just by going and building conversations and building relationships with those surgeons, getting to know them, being an expert at what I did, showed them that we had a great product, what I was selling and being able to be a resource inside the OR with the staff and the surgeon. And then when we got forward in our relationship of being able to be a rep there and help them and, and they, I've built their trust. Half the time we'd go in the case and I was a year and a half in and guess what they're asking me? They're asking me about my dog. They're asking me about what I'm doing this weekend. They're asking me about my relationship status, right? Like all this stuff it had nothing to do with med device sales, but I had earned the trust. But whenever something did come up in a surgery, I was always there. I was always responding. I was always being able to, Hey, this is what we do. And it worked out, but I had earned their trust to be the expert for them. So let me just sit here and tell you guys, it will not happen overnight. It won't happen in two weeks, but can you just continue to show up, be who you're supposed to be as a rep, the resource that we're paid to be, and then continue to build those relationships with every single person in the room. If you guys can do that, I can sit here and tell you your territories will continue to grow and prosper. Again, if you can just take your hat off of thinking three weeks, three months, and you start thinking in terms of six months, 12 months, hey, a year from now, what can I do today that's going to help? And if I can just focus on being a resource and I can help the staff, I can help the people I'm working with, I can promise you 
that your time in medical device sales will be so much better than if you're just always trying to sell. You're coming from a place of lack because that's the number one thing I see right now is when I get messages from people on my LinkedIn is, hey, Jacob, I'm a brand new rep. I'm struggling with A, B, and C. Hey, Jacob, I'm struggling with this. Hey, Jacob, I need this help. Hey, Jacob. And it goes into this compared to if it's like, hey, do you know your product? Do you know your competitor's product? Do you know what the differences are? Do you know how to like troubleshoot when stuff goes in the cases? Most of the time when I'm getting those other questions, it's they don't know those. And I'm like, just focus on those four and then just go create the relationship. So you're an expert on what you do, then go create the relationship so you can build it. And then people trust you. And then guess what? When you say you're going to show up, you showed up when, Hey, you get a last second. Like this is the part of being a rep. When you get a last second call and they're like, can you please come here? There's so many times I'll be like, yeah, I'll be right there. Is it ideal? No, but it was me building the trust with these people over the years. So then I could get to the point where it's like, guys, I'm sorry. I just can't be here today. Right. Like I, I, I've done enough in services for you all. I have, I've showed you, I can, I can FaceTime you if I needed, like there's all these other things. So that's what I would sit here and tell you guys is focus on becoming an expert, build those relationships. And then you guys can focus on continuing to sell instead of right away. So many people are just focused on selling right now. And then how can I upsell compared to if you can just be a person, because again, it's what I always tell people. It's why we've continued to have success in medical device sales is if I can just focus on building the relationships and being good at what I do, everything else will come. If I can focus on being a resource to my staff, can I, can I focus on being a resource to the accounts that I'm working with? That's when I'll go. I literally just made a sale the other day by literally just getting on a call with them, talking them through the process, saying, hey, are there any questions? And be like, nope, I know this is what you faced in your previous position and what you were go- guys were going through. I'm here to make sure that doesn't happen. Please let me know if you have any questions. I will make sure to get you the quote by the end of the day. And then can we get this process by next week? And they're like, yes, this sounds great. Thank you so much for walking us through the- everything. I'm like, no problem. Here's my stuff. If you have any questions, please let me know. And then we move forward, right? But it's just by being a resource to your accounts and showing that you are going to follow up that you are going to be different than any of the other reps who say they will and then they don't, you will have success in med device sales. And I'm excited because we're about to bring on more guests in medical device sales to have them share their experiences so you can all continue to see it's not just me, it's other people that we're working with that do these things so you can continue to have success in medical device sales. And lastly, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, everybody, thank you so much for the positive messages. I'm so glad that this podcast has been able to help you all so far and that it's continued to provide value. Um, It truly makes me so happy to hear that it's being able to help you guys because again, always coming from a place of abundance, we want it to just only help you. Uh, The one thing I will just say, it's been interesting to see that we've been having reps reach out that maybe are working at distributorships or associates that are struggling that are like, hey, I want to get in with a bigger company or I want to come in as a full line rep that have been reaching out to us. So if you are in that position, you would like more help or learn how we can help you, happy to get on a call with you. You can just follow me on Jacob McLaughlin on LinkedIn, uh, also new to medical device sales on LinkedIn. But again, you guys, my whole goal is to continue to help you guys continue to pr- thrive in your guys's career and continue to have se- success in medical device sales. But if you can press that like and subscribe button, if you share this with somebody that you think it could be helpful and mean the world to me, a five-star review does help us grow this channel. And I just hope that you guys continue to go provide value, continue to go be the best rep that you can be for the patient on the table. And you guys continue to go after your goals in medical device sales. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.